In Activity 3, How Sound Travels, students listen to sounds as they travel both through air and through a solid material. They first construct a setup to demonstrate the movement of chalk outward from a plucked string and then simulate traveling sound waves. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 3, wooden boards, screw eyes, colored chalk, nail, and string. You will also need to provide plain paper, pencils, scissors, metal spoons, hammer, and paper towels. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 3 for each student. For each team of two, cut two pieces of string, one piece one meter long and one piece 50 centimeters long. With a hammer and nail, make two shallow holes in each wooden board, one hole at each end, one centimeter from the end. Break each piece of chalk into two pieces. Each team of two will need a pencil, a metal spoon, a one meter length of string, a 50 centimeter length of string, two screw eyes, a wooden board, half a stick of chalk, and a sheet of white paper. Have paper towels available so the students can wipe their hands after handling the chalk. To begin the activity, divide the class into teams of two. Give each team a spoon, a pencil, and a one meter piece of string. Instruct students to tie their spoons in the middle of the string with a double knot. Have one student hold the ends of the string and let the spoon dangle. Have the other student strike the spoon with the pencil. Ask, what do you hear? They should hear a ringing chime-like sound. Then ask, how do you think the sound got from the spoon and pencil to your ears? Some may suggest that it traveled through the air. Next, instruct one student in each team to hold the ends of the string to his or her ears. The string should touch the inside of the outer part of the ear. It should not be poked into the ear canal. Have the other student strike the spoon with the pencil. Have the students exchange jobs so that each student has a chance to listen to the sound of the spoon through the string. Ask students, what did you hear when you held the string to your ears and your partner tapped the spoon with the pencil? They should have heard the same chime-like sound as before, plus a wave-like sound. Then ask, how do you think the sound reached your ears this time? Students should suggest that sound traveled both through the air and through the string. Next, have students recall the previous activity and ask, what did you learn about how sound is produced? Sound is produced by a vibrating object. Then ask, what do you think was vibrating in this case? Students should suggest that the spoon was vibrating. Some may say that the string was also vibrating. Give each student a copy of Activity Sheet 3 and distribute the materials. Instruct the students to set up their wooden board with the screw eyes and string as shown on Activity Sheet 3. The string should be pulled taut when tied. It can be further tightened by turning the screw eyes to wind up the string. Next, demonstrate how to pluck the string so that it moves sideways rather than up and down. Instruct students to take turns plucking the string and to watch and listen carefully. Ask students, what do you see happening to the string? What do you hear? The student should see that the string vibrates, producing a twanging sound. Next, have the students put the strings attached to the spoon to their ears and listen again when the spoon is struck by a pencil. Ask students, what vibrated when you struck the spoon with the pencil? All the students should respond that the spoon vibrated. Some may also infer that the pencil vibrated too. Repeat the procedure. This time, the student who strikes the spoon should press both sides of the string above the spoon between his or her thumbs and forefingers. Give both members of each team a chance to listen through the string. Then ask students what happened when the string is pressed between the fingers. The sound stopped because the string stopped vibrating. This time, the vibrations of the spoon caused the string to vibrate. 
the vibrations traveled through the string to the ears. Remind the students that in their previous experiments, the sounds from vibrating objects reached their ears both through the air and through the string. Explain that vibrations travel through air, solid objects, and liquids in the form of sound waves. We can hear the sounds produced by the vibrating objects only when the sound waves enter our ears. Objects do not make sounds by themselves. Some kind of force, such as striking or plucking, is required to make them vibrate and produce sound waves. Go back to the setup with the wooden board and the string. Instruct students to carefully rub the chalk onto the string and completely cover it. Tell them to watch and listen as the string is plucked. Ask students, what did you see and hear as the string was plucked? The string vibrated and they heard a sound. Some students may say they heard sound waves. Then ask, what happened to the chalk when the string was plucked? The students should have seen the chalk spray outward and onto the paper. Explain that in the same way the chalk moved outward from the string and through the air, sound waves also move outward from the vibrating string and through the air. Summarize that the string vibrates, which causes the air around it to vibrate. The vibrations, in the form of sound waves, move through the air and enter our ears as sound. To conclude the activity, have students cut the strings from the spoon and screw eyes. Unscrew the screw eyes from the wooden board and return the spoon, screw eyes, wooden board, and chalk to the kit. Discard the strings and the paper. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.